Mm. Mm. Oh, good morning. This is Mr. William West Virginia. Uh, I'll be with you in just a second. Um, checking on my messages and stuff. Well, maybe I need to put this down for a second. Um, got a word for you today. Um, you ever been somewhere visiting and you noticed that the people there weren't really paying attention because they were looking at their cell phones? You ever walk around? You ever look around at all the people that are holding these little instruments? Doing selfies? It's hilarious sometimes. Um, this is Mr. William West Virginia. I have a word for today. Stop by the Board of Education where I you know, used to work and I, I try and stop in and talk to friends and meet with friends and there's one particular teacher friend of mine who's a teacher of teachers and we always kind of get to talking about stuff and inspiring one another, churning stuff up in our spirits and we got to talking about technology and it just it birthed the word for today. And that's the fact that um, we get lost, we get disconnected somehow from one another in an age where these are supposed to be connecting us to one another, they're actually disconnecting us. Scripture teaches us that the God that I serve never sleeps nor slumbers. Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession, praying consistently and constantly for us. The Holy Spirit is on this planet leading and guiding us into truth. We serve a God who isn't distracted, who doesn't disconnect from us for any reason whatsoever. He isn't got a celestial cell phone up there that he's looking at and also paying attention to us. You are who he's attending to. Too often on this planet, you can go into any home and you'll find people on gaming systems, people on laptops, people on cell phones, people on all kinds of technology, TVs. You can have a a house full of people, you can have a room full of people, and they can all be completely disconnected from one another because they're so involved in what's on a lit screen. At times, it almost looks like we are worshiping these things. We're terrified. Heartbeats start to raise when we can't find these. We'll run all over the place if we can't, if it's not in our pocket. We will go down to the car. We will run back to the bank. We will do whatever to find those phones. Do we panic like that when we can't find our Bibles? Probably not because most of you know where yours are. They're on the coffee table in the living room. Possibly. I can remember growing up thinking... We had this gigantic Bible on my grandmother's coffee table, and, and we could look through it, and I used to look through the page and everything, but it didn't mean anything to me. This Word of God now means everything to me, and I have several Bibles, and, and sometimes when I can't find my main Bible, I do kind of panic a little bit. I use this cell phone, as I am right now to talk to you guys. So I, I check out teaching tapes on uh, YouTube to uh, further my education as far as filming or as far as uh, biblical studies. There are all kinds of things on YouTube you can use to, to learn stuff. You can get on porn sites. You can do all kinds of things on cell phones now. You can search out things. You can Google whatever you want. But let me tell you something. If you think you can Google God, you're wrong. You have to get into your word, you have to pray and talk to him, and you have to realize that he is not distracted and he'll talk back to you. I'm constantly inspired by people, and that's why I'm on mine a lot of times, because I'm, I'm on Facebook, and I'm on YouTube, and I'm interacting with people, and I'm answering people, and I'm debating people sometimes. Sometimes I'm just praying. And I'm not saying I'm the most spiritual guy because sometimes I'm on YouTube and, and I'm looking at comedians because I need a laugh once in a while because this world is pretty sad at times. But the truth of the matter is that this is a tool that you must control and you must limit 
and you must teach your children how to limit it. I've not been very good at it because I'd look around my home and everybody's on technology all the time. I'm not trying to tell you something I've got completely down because I struggle with it too. But we've got to put a limit on it. We've got to teach our children how to put a limit on it. We've got to teach them how not to be addicted because 20 years down the road, you're going to have detox centers for people that are addicted to technology. You're going to have places where they're going to have to go in order to try and get them from being so keyed up from being on the phone so much. It's going to be, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's an addiction for some people. God wants us to be addicted to him. In scripture, it actually talks about that some of the disciples were addicted to ministry. I pray in the name of Jesus that if you're addicted to technology, that you would be set free and that you would learn how to use this as a tool to pray for people, but not to pray on people, to use this to stay connected to people, but not to use it to disconnect or be angry with people. Look at the positive stuff. Look at the spiritual stuff. Look at the stuff that's going to build you up and edify you and inspire you. The things that are negative, the things that are no good, the pornography, the stuff that can take away from you, don't look at it. Try and teach people all the time. You know, as a man that's grown up and it's learned a lot of things, um, much of what we do wrong comes into our eyes. And then it gets into our brains, it gets into our spirits, and it corrupts us. Learn how to not look. Learn how to not get involved with some things. Learn how to turn some things off and walk away. Go read a book. Go for a walk. Go for a run. Go work out at the gym. There's all kinds of things that you can do to benefit your life and to make it live a lot longer or go a lot longer. This is Mr. Willie, West Virginia. Not a rule, like I say all the time, just a suggestion. We all need to kind of back away from the technology because it can be a distraction from interacting and fellowshipping with other humans who are all made in the image of God. God bless. Have a great day. Shalom.